Hello everyone. Uh, my name is Lida Walsh and I am Head of Solution at Harris Interactive and I will introduce you to our High Brands Sustainability Framework. Later on, we will share with you some case studies from banking sector, newspapers, energy and spirit category. For some time, we were thinking if the traditional frameworks for measuring brand equity models are reflecting the modern way of marketing brands. There's evidence that looking only to brand equity and penetration is not enough to build a sustain sustainable brand. Brands owners are interested how their brands will perform in the future. We still measure core brand health measures, which is brand knowledge, such as awareness, familiarity, and brand penetration, together with core brand equity. These measures reflect the past and present brand health development. But it's not enough. For brands to be sustainable, we have to measure future relevance. Is the brand going to evolve according to future customer needs? And if they are still going to be relevant to consumers? To ensure brand sustainability, the brand has to have good level of vitality. So what we mean by vitality? At first, there has to be some excitement about the brand. People must be eager to buy or use it and actively looking for information about the brand. Also, consumers have to have some sense of community or attachment to the brand. It means that there must be two ways interactions with the brand to allow co-creation. And there must be some level of empathy, such as personal identification with the people from the brand and empathy with other users. Then we calculate a high brand scores. There are 13 core questions which, need, which feed into the high brand pillars. These were extensive, extensively researched and validated during the framework development. A mechanism how to calculate uh, one number high brand score was identified and it was proven that this score strongly correlates with the marketing outcomes of brand consideration and consequent purchase. However, what we find even more interesting is the brand sustain sustainability metrics, which gives us deep diagnostics. The vertical side of the metrics shows how strong a brand is, is in terms of its penetration and equity, which are the traditional measures. The horizontal side shows to what extent the brand is future re relevant. The size of the bubble shows brand vitality. Building brands scores low across all measures. They have low future relevance and very low vitality. Second quadrant represents strong brands. These brands have high penetration and equity, but low future relevance. The level of vitality tends to be also very low. Challenging brands quadrant is very interesting. These brands are shaking the market and challenging status quo. They are future relevant, they have massive vitality, but these brands still working towards improving penetration and brand equity. They tend to be niche. Compelling brands have it all. They are future relevant, have great penetration and equity, and their vitality is very healthy. And now I ask my colleague, Mark Hurst, to share with you, you outputs from the banking sector. Thank you, Lida. Hello, I'm Mark Hurst, one of the research directors here at Harris. Now let me take you back in time, which for some of us will be a long way back to our teenage years. Sat with your cassette tape deck on a Sunday evening recording the top 40, hoping you had enough space left on your C60 tape. You remember that once in a while, a record came right out of the blue into the top spot and we heard the immortal words straight in at number one. Why am I saying this? Well, that scenario has happened in our latest high brands banking survey. 
Let's first look at the overall scores in the last wave back in October 2018. Nationwide led the way, followed by Santander, Halifax, Lloyds and Metro Bank. Now let's jump forward to the latest wave. And whilst many of the brands have remained more or less in the same position, straight in at number one is Monzo. And it's not been a case of just sneaking ahead. No, it's in front by a considerable distance, 0.23, which is virtually the same spread that covers the next four brands. Let's have a look at how these scores are made up using our high brand sustainability matrix, starting again with the last wave. Back in October, Nationwide led the way by scoring well across the three key areas that the high brands matrix is showing. Also interesting to note was Metro's position. It demonstrated the highest vitality score and was seen as one of the leaders in terms of future relevance, but being a relatively new bank, it isn't going to have that depth of equity and knowledge that some of its more established competitors may have. Let's move forward to the most recent wave. Here we see that those brands have more or less maintained their relative position from October, but they have been surpassed by this new entrant. Monzo has leapt into the top position for both Vitality, which we'll have a look in a moment, and Future Relevance. It's on this metric that is really stolen a march on the other brands. You'll notice we've had to extend the x-axis considerably to accommodate its really high score. It's clear that consumers see a role for fintechs in the future of banking. So how is it doing this? Well, their penetration in terms of new accounts is newsworthy in itself. And the bank hev heavily promotes this on their website, as well as in its new advertising campaign. In fact, this is the first high brands wave where its growth and increase in familiarity have allowed us to include it in the analysis. It has also just pushed First Direct off top spot in Money Savings Experts annual customer service poll. But what does the bank see as driving these high metrics? Well, a recent interview in Marketing Week with the bank's head of marketing, Tristan Thomas, hinted at some of the areas that our measurement is picking up. Firstly, crowdfunding is seen as crucial. Thomas says, for us, crowdfunding is all about customer engagement and letting them be part of it. Secondly, transparency, both in the way the bank interacts with its customers and how they can use their account. Thirdly, word of mouth recommendations, community meetups and hackathons all help develop their sense of being in this together. And lastly, innovation, not just in one team or one division, Thomas says it's everywhere, embedded in all that we do. So in view of the arrival of the fintechs, are the existing players thrown in the towel? Well, the simple answer is no. Let's look at three that score well in high brands and how they are responding. Let's start with Nationwide. As you can see on screen, it made a very public statement about its digitalisation plans, which come out on top of its commitment to transforming and maintaining high street branches. These plans are supported by the organisation's ongoing marketing campaign, including one of the latest TV ads that recognises the value of word of mouth recommendation. In a similar way, the Halifax is progressing more digitalisation of their products, utilising app technology and investing in branches that meet the changing needs of customers, including opening last year what was the largest bank branch in the UK on Tottenham Court Road, built across three floors. Also added to this engaging mix is its popular series of adverts bringing TV and film characters together with their products. And what about Barclays? Well, they're seen as having one of the leading apps by consumers, driven by their advertising around technology and most recently their locked out advert. They have also been one of the first brands to include and promote open banking functionality within their app. So what about the challenges? Well, let's look at Metro Bank. They had lots of great news in February. Firstly, they came top in the Competition and Market Authority's service quality measurement for 2018, both at an overall level you can see on the screen there, and the service offered in branches. Then it was announced Metro Bank had won the largest grant from the Banking Competition Remedies Scheme, so it all seemed to be going good. However, life for challenges can also be challenging. Both Metro Bank and TSB have found that building challenger banks is not always straightforward, whether it's an issue about how certain loans are accounted for or large IT failures. 
They lead to poor PR, and this in turn can affect consumers' views about a brand's future relevance. TSB is a good example of this. Here is TSB on the sustainability matrix back in October 2017. The bank, off the back of its launch, brand positioning work and supporting advertising, was starting to differentiate itself and move into the compelling area of the matrix. However, since they encountered their IT issues, TSB have dropped in all three measures, especially seen a reduction in their vitality and future relevance. It'll be interesting to see in the coming waves whether the new CEO and his team can rediscover that momentum that the brand had 18 months ago. So in summary, whilst the latest high brands results in the banking market show the impact that the fintech brands can have through their engagement approaches, the results and our investigations also show that the more established brands are not lying down and are looking to make a fight of things. We will watch the results through the next wave of high brands with interest.